Hi everyone, my name is Cherie Tucker and I'm here to teach you how to make your very own ball gown. I'm a teacher at a secondary college in Perth WA and have taught this process to Year 10 students for the last few years. If you're wondering whether or not this video is for you, the answer is yes. The video is suitable for beginners and experienced sewers. For beginners, I will take you through the entire process with step-by-step -step instructions. If you are an experienced sewer, there will be times you can skip ahead as I will be covering a lot of the basics. It will take roughly 30 hours for you to complete a ball gown. This will depend on the experience you have, your time efficiency, the amount of mistakes made along the way and the design complexity. The series of instructional videos will teach you everything you need to know about making your very own ball gown or prom dress. You are not limited to the design I show you and you can make changes to the design. I will try to explain multiple ways of making a dress using the same base pattern. If you ever have any questions or concerns along the way, please do not hesitate to contact me. The dress I will be making for this video features a simple black satin bodice with a sweetheart neckline, a lace overlay with a high neck and collar band, and a simple chiffon gathered skirt. You can design your dress in whatever way you like. Here are some examples of other types of dresses you could create using these simple instructions and following the pattern I provide. You could create a chiffon covered bodice with pleats or gathers. You could create a simple lace overlay over the bodice that doesn't go over the shoulders. You could create a beaded lace bodice. You could create a dress with a skirt that flows from the waistline. It could flow from just under the bust line or you could have a fully fitted bodice all the way down to the hips. Your skirt could be gathered, pleated, it could be a simple A-line skirt, it can be large and puffy, or it can be straight and slimline. It's up to you what way you design your ball gown. Okay, so to get started, you will need calico, tape measure, some pins, fabric scissors, paper scissors, and the pattern which has been provided. You need to use paper scissors obviously for your paper because you don't want to blunt fabric scissors. The first thing you'll need to do is use your tape measure to measure your bust. Once you've figured out the measurement using the chart I have provided, you need to cut out your paper pattern. So I've already worked out that I need a size 10, so I'm going to find where it says size 10 and just follow that line around. Anywhere where there aren't any dotted lines, you just cut on the only line that's there. These things here are called notches. We're not going to cut those out just yet. They're to help us line the fabric up when we're sewing it. We'll cut those out after um, we've cut the paper out and we've pinned it to the fabric. So we'll cut that out and then I'll show you the next step. Okay, so now we've got four pattern pieces. You will notice on each of these pattern pieces that there is a line that says lengthen or shorten here. If you are planning on doing a long bodice, you need to check that the bodice lines up with your waist. So to work out if the bodice is going to be too long or too short for your body, you need to use pattern pieces number two. You need to hold the pattern piece up against your body. It may be a good idea to get some help with this and position the two triangular notches just above and below the bust. So you're following that roundness with your bust. Then you need to find the smallest part of your waist. So just run your hands down until you feel like you hit the smallest part. And then you want to see if that lines up 
with where this says waistline. So if you put your finger there, that's your waist, you can see that that's quite a bit of difference. So you would then measure, with a tape measure, the difference between there and there, and then you would simply chop it on this line and bring it up. Let's say it was two centimeters, you would shift this up two centimeters. If your waistline is lower, two centimeters lower, you would cut it here and you would extend it down two centimeters and then obviously you draw some lines to join it up. If you're doing a shorter bodice, if you're planning on cutting it so that the bodice actually runs along the middle here, not past your waist, you don't need to worry about making any adjustments here because you're going to be cutting that off anyway. Okay, so now we're going to cut out a calico bodice using the pattern pieces that we've already cut out of paper. I usually get my students to do a calico bodice because it's good practice, uh, they can make adjustments and then use those um, adjusted pieces of calico as their pattern for their good fabric and they can cut it up and change the shape of the bodice without having to um, make any mistakes with their good fabric. So the way we lay it out, we'll start with um, number two, which says center front on fold. So this is the only pattern piece that needs to go on the fold. Because I've got my fold on this side, I'm just gonna flip it over like that and place that right on the fold. To make sure you haven't got any gaps, make sure it's not overlapping, you want it right on the fold. Your fabric should only be folded once and you should have your opposite selvages lined up nicely together like that. Number three and number one, it doesn't really matter where you place them. Uh, it's more important that you just pay attention to this grain line down the middle here. This grain line should run in the same direction, parallel with your selvage. So it shouldn't be at a diagonal like that, it should be going the same, okay? So you can position those wherever you like, obviously depends on how wide your fabric is as to where you place them. Number four, it says centre back here. So we're going to place that along the selvage. But just as a bit of a precaution, we're going to add a little bit extra to that. So same as I did for this one, I'm just going to flip that over. What it might be easier to do is actually have your fold on the other side. So we're just going to leave a nice gap between where it says centre back and where the selvage is. That way when we're putting the zip in, if we happen to have cut a pattern that's a little bit too small, we've got some extra space in there. So I always like to leave a bit extra there. And a good way of remembering is to just draw a line like that so you don't accidentally cut through that. So I'm just going to pin those down and cut them out. Okay, you'll notice that when I was pinning, I haven't pinned where the little triangles are because I'm going to cut those notches out as I'm cutting out the calico. So I'll cut that out now and then we can start thinking about sewing it all together.
want to, when you remove your pins, you can write the number of the pattern piece on your calico, just to make sure you remember which one is which. Um, otherwise, you can just sort of look at the shape of them. And I like to just use the little notches that I've cut to help remind me which one is which. I haven't bothered to cut the full triangle. I just made a little snip just so that I can see where the little triangle was. Okay, so now I'm going to put it. Alright, I've taken all the pins out, so now we can start sewing this together. So we can remove our pattern pieces. And I always like to start with the easy ones, three and four. So we've got our centre back and our side back. So the first thing you need to do is look for those notches, they will show you where to line your fabric up. You'll notice that that's a single one because that lines up there. That's a double one because that lines up there. And this one has got two singles. So that's how you know where to match up. So we'll start with three and four. Now you will have two of each pattern piece. So you want to reverse one of them. Okay. So you're looking for that single notch and you're just going to flip one on top of the other, join that notch up. So I've lined up the two little triangles. And I'll pop a pin there and then I can pin it all the way along, making sure that the edges are together. We don't want to pin it like this where they're not lined up. We want our edges to be together so we just slide the fabric on. I like to pin like this because then I can sew straight over the top of the pins. Um, just be really careful, you don't want to catch your machine needle on it because it can sort of blunt it a little bit. Um, but I just prefer to do it that way. And we always sew with this pattern a 1.5 centimetre seam allowance. So now I'm going to do the opposite with the other ones. So it's always a good idea to check that your pieces are facing the opposite direction because obviously um, they need to be a mirror image of each other to fit both sides of the body. So we've pinned those, we'll sew those in a second. And we'll just do number one and two. So number two, we cut that one on the centre fold. So that one will actually open out into a nice piece of fabric. And then we've got number one, goes on either side of that number two. So we need to look for the little notches that we cut out and we're going to pin those together first. So same thing, flip it over onto the top, find the little snip you made and pop the pin in there. Same with the second snip, pop the pin in there as well. Now you'll notice that this doesn't really line up perfectly. The stiffer your fabric, the more it will sort of sit um, apart. So we need to bring all of those edges together. This part here is the trickiest because particularly when you're sewing stiff fabric, you'll have to sew little bubbles. So what we want to do is find the center between those two pins. And you'll see that the fabric is separated a bit. We just slide the center down and we pin it there. Then we go into the quarters, find the centre and you'll notice there's a little bit of a bubble in the fabric, that's okay, you just want to make sure those bubbles are even. And that. And same on the other side. And you want to check to make sure you haven't got any super big bubbles anywhere. If you do, you want to sort of spread it evenly between 
those two notches. Okay, that's basically like that with the little bubbles so that it can fit around the bust seam. Okay, because it's actually going to sit out like this when you're wearing it, it's not going to be flat. So you'll be sewing a 1.5 centimeter seam allowance. As you're sewing, you don't want these bubbles to move, so you can sort of pinch them a bit. You can have a little crease on the outside, but you don't want any creases on this side of your seam. So when you're sewing along here, you can have a bubble here, but you don't want anything showing on this side. It should be flat here. So sometimes that can take a few attempts. Don't worry if you have to unpick it a few times. Uh, even I still make mistakes when I'm using stiff fabric. So you'll find the calico is a bit easier. It's good practice for when you use satins or silks or stuff like that. The same down here, we're sliding the fabric, but there's no bubbles or anything on this bit. We're just sliding the edges together. Just making sure it all lines up nicely. You'll notice that there's a bit of an overlap here. That's because when we fold it out, that seems actually going to line up nicely. So that's why there's a bit of an overlap on that one. Okay, so now we want to sew these together. After we've sewn these separate pieces, then we'll join them all up so that they'll make one nice big bodice. Okay, now we're going to sew our calico pieces together. So we'll start with number three and four, and we'll just sew down where we've already pinned it using a 1.5 seam iron. So just following the guide on the machine, I'm going to line my fabric up. I'm using a dark colour thread so that I can see where I've sewn it. You will only do this for your practice. When you're sewing your actual fabric for your final dress, you want to use a similar coloured thread. So just start by back stitching and then work your way down. where we've got to sew between the notches, okay, number one and number two. Remember we had those little bubbles that might appear between where the notches were. So we always start at the top of the fabric. Making sure your edges are together. Back stitch. And we'll just sew until we get to that notch. What you want to do here is make sure you've got a nice even curve. We don't want to have any sudden jagged bits, otherwise you'll have a pointy bust line when you uh, finish your bodice. So you can see I've got a bit of a bubble here. I'm just going to sort of hold that there and make sure this side is flat as I go around. I'm making sure to turn it very gradually. Sure, we keep those bubbles. What we don't want to do is push all the bubbles to one spot and then end up with a big crease or anything. We want it to be even. And I'm back at my notch, so now I can just sew normally without worrying about bubbles. on the other side but you'll notice the bubbles will sit underneath on the opposite side you just need to be careful making sure you don't create any creases as you're sewing. Okay, 
what you don't want is for one of the pieces of fabric to pop out. They should be lined up on the edge nicely. So once you've done that, you can take your pins out and it's a good idea to just hold this up against your bust and make sure that it is sitting nicely. So you would just open it out, pull it against your bust and make sure you don't have any lumps or bumps or pointy bits. If you do, you can either unpick it or you can, if it's not too bad, just sew over it again. Make sure your seam is nice and even the whole way around um, and make sure you haven't got any fabric overlapping. It should be lined up nicely. Okay, so we've sewn number one and two together and we've sewn number three and four together. Now we're going to join them all together. So you'll notice on the edge of your number one, you've got those double notches. So you would have cut two little slits. You'll see the same thing on your number three. So we're going to join those together. Make sure you've got the right one and make sure you've got it up the right way because if you're joining it up like that, obviously that's not going to make a very nice bodice. We need to make sure our seams are all facing the same way, so don't accidentally put the wrong side on because the seams will obviously be inside out and some of it. So there should be one for each side and we'll just quickly pin those together, making sure we keep the seam on the same outside. So I'll pick We can sew down those using a 1.5 seam allowance. So starting at the top of the bodice as always and back stitching 1.5. So this is what your bodice should look like after you've sewn them all together. We've got pattern piece number two in the middle number one, number three, and number four. And obviously if we flip it over, we've got a nice seam. This here is our bust seam. So we need to try that on, make sure it's sitting nice. And now we can try the entire bodice on and fit it and make sure that it is sitting nicely and do any adjustments to the seams. Um, and then after we've done that, we can cut to whatever length we want, we can change the neckline, we can do whatever we want to the bodice in order to get ready for using our good fabric.